Hey everyone, welcome back here to my home studio. I am Karen with Walsh of Karen's Pots and Glass, and I'm a high school ceramics teacher and a potter, and I am a maker of YouTube videos to help people uh, along their journey of working with clay, whether it be hand building, wheel throwing, glazing, stuff like that. So uh, this video that I'm doing is a little follow-up video to one that I just recently posted when I did an unboxing and review of this little uh, pottery wheel that came uh, from Amazon. A company sent it to me to do an unboxing and review. It's called uh, the company is Nant Fun, and I'll put that link in the video description so you can see that. But this is one of those real little pottery wheels, and um, I did an unboxing video, and I also did another video of how to use alternative bats, because this came with only one bat, and once you use that and it's in use, you might need other bats. So I show some other bats in that, so check out that video. I'll link them both here. Like I was just using a piece of canvas, um, um, pieces of tar paper, things like that. Craft foam can be used for a bat as well. But anyway, this video is regarding trimming on how to trim on one of these little wheels because there are no special little uh, grips to hold them. Um, if you've ever seen some of my other trimming videos, I have a wide variety of trimming videos that are out there with lots of different techniques, whether it be lugs, whether it be grips, whether it be sticky pads, that sort of thing. But what I'm going to use today is one of my favorite ways, which is trimming on a chum. Now a chum is a domed piece of clay that you center on the wheel and you put your item to be trimmed on top of it. So let me just pull these over here. Okay, so these are the pieces that I made um, like the other day, or maybe it was yesterday, I forget, but these are the pieces that I made. Now I want you to notice, first of all, I removed the plastic. So this is the way I've had them stored. I did take them off of their little bats and I flipped them upside down on a wear board. I have the wear board covered with a towel, like a heavy towel. I just use old uh, heavy bath towels. And then I put plastic over it. The reason I did that is I wanted the towel to help dry them out but it helps to dry them evenly. If you only put plastic over things, that kind of holds in moisture and it even holds in condensation. So I don't want to do that. I want the towel on there to help it to dry evenly, but the plastic helped it from getting too dry because I left it sit, sit since last night like this. So as you look at my forms, the idea is we're going to center a dome of clay that goes up inside of the form to help hold it securely. So I'm going to have to have different size chums for these different size forms. So this is going to be the most narrow one. It's going to go up inside of it. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how this is done. So in my unboxing video, I talked about the level of my wheel because um, I do not like to be hunched over a wheel. Um, this wheel is very, very short. You put it on the floor, but I have it on a short table that brings it up to a nice standing height. And uh, like my in my wheel throwing videos that I normally do, I use my scut wheel which is a standing height wheel. I love my little scut wheel. I shouldn't say little, it's a, it's a substantial scut wheel. But this is a great, um, great uh, quality, very durable wheel uh, to uh, use. If you want to see any videos in greater detail on um, how to throw, how to center, how to open, um, trim, anything, please check out my wheel throwing playlist because they will give you a lot more information. Here I'm just doing a super quick demo. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to get this clay centered so it's not wobbly on the little bat. And because this wheel is so light, lightweight, I really have to use a lot of downward pressure to prevent it from moving you know, across my table. If I push too hard from the side, it's just going to start scooting across my table. So there we go. I have my center dome of clay. Now this is going to be for my cup first. So after I have it centered, I'm going to then take my rib and scrape away the slip. I don't want to just compress the slip in and make it all shiny. I want to physically scrape that slip off. And I'm using a Mud Tools yellow rib. Now the next trick that I'm going to do 
is I am going to make a few little lines. I'm just going to use the edge of my nail here because if I make a line, then when I go to put this pot on, I can kind of use those lines as a guide. Like, do I have it level? And I can kind of see a little bit better. So if I look at it from the side, it sometimes helps. Now we'll just turn that on. And if you saw my unboxing video, you will have seen where I talked about how this wheel doesn't really have a slow speed. It goes from nothing to kind of a medium speed. So you want to use caution uh, when using uh, one of these. Now I'm going to grab the tools that they sent with it. Okay, so they sent four trim tools with it, um, different uh, styles, but it's just the bent metal. Now, I'm, I've never been real big into these, so I don't know that I'm going to trim with them. So, eh, I think because I'm up here on a chum, I'm going to use one that I prefer to use more often. So I'm just using a regular loop tool. So once it's anchored on the chum, I have to make sure that I'm using my left hand to push down on the bottom because that keeps it from uh, you know, sliding sideways. If you aren't pushing down, if you're only pushing sideways, you're gonna throw it off. So there we go. I have, I have the exterior of the foot ring Now I'll use the interior of the foot, or the, the um, I'll cut the interior of the foot. And as I always explain in my trim videos, always go straight down from the bottom when you trim. Because if you come in from the exterior on the outside, and then you go straight down on the interior, those cuts may not be parallel, because the outside might not be parallel to the inside if you just go in from the outside. So I make my cut straight down and then I'm just going to trim away the extra on the interior of the foot ring. And I made my I made my depth of my floor probably three eighths to a half inch thick. So I'm able to do a little deeper foot ring like this. So by doing a slightly deeper foot ring it enables you to uh, glaze the interior bottom if you would like or do something decorative on that. I definitely recommend taking your finger, smoothing out your foot, the bottom edge of the foot, and you could even take a little rib if you want to. Alright, so this was piece number one. Now I just pop it off, I wiggle it and pop it off, and that is trimmed on a chum if you find that you have messed up your rim if it's too soft it'll get stuck but this is leather hard um, so it's it works really nicely this is ready to set aside get a handle on it now for the next one this is a little bit of a wider form so as I do this it's not really gonna hit so I need to make my chum a little bit wider and a little less tall. So for that, first of all, I am going to make sure that I get all my uh, trimming chunks off of the side of it because I don't want to incorporate those drier trimming chunks into it. And now I'm just going to put some water back on there. I'm going to push it downward, make it a little bit wider, keeping it domed. There we go, so it's still domed. Get my slip off my hands. And then I can take my rubber rib or my silicone rib and scrape off that. And once again, I recommend, I just, I like to do the lines just because I find it's easier for me to get it centered. You don't have to do that, that's just a, a little trick that I find it makes it a little faster for me. Okay, so as I put this one on there, it doesn't go up inside of it that much, but
So as I look at this, I just want to try to get it as centered as I can. There we go. Okay. All right. Now I'm ready to do, again, the exterior of the foot ring first. So by pushing down on the pot bottom, I do the exterior of the foot ring first, going straight down from the bottom. Now one of the key things about throwing, or actually a key thing about pottery, is you want to have the walls and the floor of your pots an even thickness. If you just skip the trimming phase and you have a thick bottom, the chances that you're going to have things dry unevenly, thick and thin spots will dry unevenly, and then you might get cracking, or heaven forbid, if it's really thick and you start to fire it, you could blow it up if it's too thick. So you always want your clay to be an even thickness so it can helpfully dry evenly without cracking. And before you put it in the kiln, it needs to be 100% thoroughly dry or put it on a nice little preheat. Now I'm going to do the interior of the foot ring. Again, straight down from the bottom when I make those cuts. And then do the interior, just trim away some of that extra. Now, one of the things that I like to think about when I trim, sometimes I like to dip my pots and sometimes I like to hold it by the foot ring. So quite often I will make my design of my feet in such a way that I can physically hold the pot upside down by the foot ring. Something that you can think about, certainly not mandatory, it's just uh, a choice that I like to think about when I make it. It gives me more um, alternatives when I'm going to glaze my pot. I can do maybe some more things with it. Now I'm just going to take my finger. I added a little moisture, by the way, to the finger before I did this. Just come in here, take my little rib, kind of compress it down, and there we go. Okay, so there's my small bowl. Okay, and then the last, oops, I got a little chunk on there. I'll be able to clean that off though. And then the last one is the wide bowl. Now this one, as you can see, is even wider than that. So I'm gonna have to go down even a little bit further. And uh, the other thing that you could do is you could actually just make a pad of clay. That's possible as well. So like if I wanted to just make a pad of clay and not even have it arch up, that's possible. Um, like maybe with plates and stuff, that's kind of nice, but there we go. So that, I think, should be wide enough, and I'll just check it before I rib it off. We'll just hold that up here. Yep, that is wide enough. And then I'm going to trim the, or scrape this away. Again, why do I scrape this away? If you don't scrape it away, the slip is going to get stuck to your form, and that's a, not a good thing, because then you'll mess up your edges if it gets stuck. Okay, and then... Lastly, I'll do some little rings around there. Okay, let's see how that looks. Alrighty, I think that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Now if you saw in the video when I did this one, because this was on a flexible bat, meaning that the bat itself was not stiff, I left the base of the walls a little bit thicker on this because I wanted a little bit more stability so I didn't distort the rim of the pot. So I left the walls thicker at the base just for a little bit more support. And I knew that I could trim that away. 
Again, I pretty much did that because I had it on a piece of tar paper and when I picked it up, it was all flexible and could really warp the rim if I uh, bent it when I picked it up. All right, so I trim the exterior by first of all making my initial line go straight down from the bottom. Now, for any of you that are new to uh, pottery, all this clay can be recycled, can be remoistened and recycled. Just check again on my channel for my how I recycle clay in my home studio. It's real helpful. And I'll have some other videos where I show some other ways to of like what I do with my slip and stuff like that. All right, so there's the exterior. I'm going to just round over the edge of the foot. Then I'm going to go in here and do the interior of the foot. Now, I usually try to keep the width of my my foot ring about the same width as my wall because um, I don't want the foot ring to suddenly get really thick. Again, everything should be about the same thickness because I want it to dry evenly. All right, now I have the interior and exterior of the foot ring trimmed. I'm just going to add a little moisture, smooth out the bottom edge of my foot ring. Take the edge of my rib, smooth out the side of the bowl. And there we go. And that is trimming on one of these little wheels using a chum. And these, I can, I can finish the uh, cup by putting a handle on it and the bowls, I can just let dry nice and slowly. So shoot me any questions that you might have below. Check out some of my other videos, check out my playlist. Um, if you wanna see the review on this, feel free to. I'm gonna have another uh, video coming up sometime in the near future. I, uh, the, another company, Vivor, Devor, I don't know how you pronounce it, they also um, inquired and they wanted me to do a video of one of their wheels. So I'll give you, uh, give you my feedback on those. So uh, I hope you subscribe if you haven't and I hope you keep potting if you can. So I just did a video on trimming on a chum and I had this leftover pad of clay. So I thought I might as well just throw something with it. So I thought I would just show you a little vase real quickly. So this hunk of clay, I did not do what I normally would do and keep it all nicely domed the whole time. Instead, this one developed a well because it was so wide. So I'm just dropping the middle where the well was. And I wanna just show you real quickly how to recenter the wall. If your wall is ever thrown off, you can do the, the duck bill, which is you squeeze side to side with the left hand while you push down with the right hand. Your hands are locked together, locked to the wheel, and that helps you to recenter the wall. Again, this wheel, does not slow down very easily. I pretty much have it on a, about the slowest speed possible. Let's see if I can slow it down a little bit more. A little bit more. And there we go. A little vase on this little wheel. It works.